working with problems such as this, where we have a greater than or equal to constraint in the original problem, we need to use a slightly different method from the standard simplex. There are two methods, the two-stage method and the big M method. This video will concentrate on the big M method, so we need to introduce variables to make our constraints work. The first one is quite simple. It's the standard type. We have less than or equal to 11, so we introduce a slack variable to take our values up to 11. When we work with the greater than or equal to constraint, we need to be slightly more creative though. First of all, we're going to have x plus 3y being equal to 15. A necessary condition of introduced variables is that they must be non-negative, and so we need to subtract the surplus variable s2. However, this introduces another problem. In bringing us down to 15, we need to think about the fact that our initial basic feasible solution has x and y both being equal to 0. If that were the case, we'd have 0 plus 0 minus a positive number, we would end up with a negative number. This can't happen, so we introduce an artificial variable, a1. This is then the equation that we're going to work with. So for every greater than or equal to constraint that you have, we're always going to subtract a surplus and add an artificial. For the big M method, we need to rearrange this to give us a1 equals 2. And we would do this with any artificial variables. The reason for that is that what we do next is we take our original objective function and we subtract m times the sum of all of the artificial variables. So if we had more than one in this example, we would do take away m brackets a1 plus a2 plus a3 and however many other ones we have. Now m is an arbitrarily large number. This just means that any value that you have within your problem is smaller than m. If you've got hundreds or thousands or whatever as the coefficients within your objective function and your constraints, then m would be in the millions range or higher than that. It doesn't really matter what value it is as long as it's bigger than anything within your problem. For the purposes of working through it, it's helpful to think of m as representing a million. That should deal with anything. So when you're doing your calculations and working out which values to look at, I tend to think of m as being a million. But of course, it can be bigger. What we do next is we substitute in for any artificial variables. So in this case, I'm substituting in a1. That's why we did the stage just before. We then rearrange that to collect all the x's, y's, and so on. And finally, we move all of the variables to the left-hand side with the p and just keep the numbers on the right. So remembering that m is a number, minus 15m is also just a number. We then construct our initial tableau. So we make sure that we put the m's in there in the objective line. That is absolutely fine. Now in working with this, the first stage is always to identify the pivot column. Looking along the p row at each of the values that are in there, we see several with an m in it. This is when it can be quite useful to think of it as representing a million, for example. So in the x column, we have minus 2 minus a million. Then in the y column, minus 1 minus 3 million. The s2 has positive a million. Then we have minus 15 million, or minus 15m really, in the value column, but we don't look at that one, we're looking at the variables. So the largest negative number would be the minus 1 minus 3m in the y column. This one is the largest negative value. We then follow the standard simplex method, and we calculate our values of theta, and we identify the smallest positive value there. So 3 is our pivot. We then construct our second tableau. We follow the standard simplex method. I'll add a link in the description below to my video on how to use the standard simplex method, just in case you're not too comfortable with it. But there are all of our row operations and the corresponding values. We then take our second tableau and we once again identify the pivot column. In this case, it's minus 5 thirds is the largest. We've actually eliminated M from most of the other columns. And then we proceed as before with each of our row operations shown there. Now at this point, we have a slight problem. In the S2 column, we see that we have the only negative value, minus three over four, this is our pivot column. But when we work out the values of theta, we see that they're both negative. And remember that we need to find the smallest positive value. There aren't any in this case, and so we cannot carry on. So even though we have a negative value on the P row, we're actually at our optimum solution. We have x and y values, we have a p value, and this is the optimal solution for this problem. 
So the big M method is quite straightforward. You've got that slightly peculiar setup, which you have to be very careful with the algebra on. You also then have to think very carefully about identifying your pivot column. But once you've done that, it's the standard simplex method. It's not too complicated. I usually find that it's a little bit quicker than the two-stage method, but you do just have to be a little bit more careful when you're doing that setup to ensure that you get the algebra right. However, good luck with everything. I'm sure you'll be fine with this one. Mm -hmm.